Hello again and your mighty welcome to another edition of KLTV's Premier News Discussion Programme, Weekly Wind-Up. I'm Dave Hodgson and this week our guest is John McKenahan from Brunswick Centre which provides sexual health and HIV services across Kirklees and Calderdale. A great drug battle between HIV AIDS campaigners has now been won in a feud with the NHS regarding a drug called PrEP, which is an acronym of Pre-Exposure Prophylaxis. It's a daily pill for people who are in danger of becoming HIV positive. Well, John, is this a miracle drug? Is this what's the, what we've all been waiting for? Um. Thanks for inviting me along today, David. I appreciate it. You're that. more than welcome. Um, it, it's great to have this discussion on local um, television. Um, I guess it's, a, it's a, a great drug to be having for uh, people um, who are at risk of HIV, certainly. Right. Um, it's not so much uh, the drug itself, is it, that the controversy is about. It's surrounding its introduction and supply that's hit the headlines. What's happened? Um, well, the issue has been that um, NHS England um, decided uh, not to follow their process through around uh, the commissioning of PrEP mm -hmm. uh, for people. Um, their their uh, decision was based on the fact that they believed that um, sexual health sits with local authorities, uh, the responsibility for that, which is, which is true. Um, local authorities, of course, don't um, do sexual health on their own. They do it with other, other kind of statutory authorities, including NHS England. Um, so NHS England made that decision that it should lie with them. Um, now that decision was challenged in the High Court by the National AIDS Trust, um, uh, who found in their favour. Mm. Who, sorry, who, who suggested that actually uh, there was no legal reason why NHS England couldn't uh, provide that. And uh, as we all know, NH, NHS England has, uh, has uh, a responsibility responsibility around uh, prevention and the do commission vaccines for example. Yes, of course the row isn't about the efficacy of the tablets is it? It's about the fact that it's £400 per person. It's, um, it'll probably be somewhere in the region of uh, about £5,000 per year. Per year, ah. And, 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 and that would be assuming that someone would be on PrEP all that time. Um, it's unlikely that people would be on PrEP for all that time. Um, PrEP would be designed to get to those people who are at, at increased and highest risk of HIV. So the numbers that I suspect coming forward for PrEP will not be that large, um, but we do know that the evidence shows that um, those most at risk will be protected from HIV, mm -hmm. and that's got to be a, a, an important thing to have. Um, the, the other thing that I think to consider is that um, prevention programmes don't come free. There's always a cost attached, unfortunately. Um, but just looking at costs in the broader context, um, if you think someone with HIV will probably cost somewhere in the region of £380,000 in lifetime treatment costs. Now, that would provide uh, PrEP for 76 years for one person. Um, and as I said earlier, the chances of someone being on PrEP all their lives is very, very unlikely. As I say, they'll be on it for a short period of time. And if that keeps them safe from HIV, that's got a good thing. So it is that good, is it? It seems to be that good indeed. All, all, all the trials have shown um, that it's very effective, um, particularly for those people who, as I say, are at higher risk uh, for whatever reason. Um, and, and the evidence is there. So we've got the United States, Canada, France and Kenya who are... Mm -hmm. Um, providing PrEP as part of their HIV prevention strategy. Uh, you are looking after people who have this problem. At one time, it was dealt with as, as a death sentence, wasn't it? Mm. Is that all in the past now? Um, pretty much if people access treatments, um, they can expect a normal life expectancy for sure. Um, and the evidence shows that people who access treatment and support services have much better health outcomes. That's great. but. I think the sort of really snag here is that the NHS have gone on record as saying that they are going to appeal against this ruling that they should pay. Now, what happens if this is successful? And they say, right, none of our problem now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, there's been calls from uh, lots of MPs from the all parliamentary group on HIV uh, and the National AIDS Trust to ask them uh, to kind of drop their appeal. Um, NHS England have gone back to a public consultation which is available on their website for anyone to, to feed into. Um, so I guess the jury's still out in some ways to see what will actually happen in the end. 
You're right. There's a lot of misunderstanding about HIV AIDS. Uh, you, you, you can actually have a, be positive, but not have full blown AIDS. And a lot of people think it's just males that have it. Would you care to elaborate for us and I'm give like... us some information <laughs> okay. that once and for all okay. people can understand just sure. what the problems are? Sure. It's interesting you say once and for all, Dave, because uh, you know I've had these. Conver- I've worked on HIV a long time. Yeah. yeah. Had these conversations for <laughs> ongoing. And we still state. haven't knocked it. We, in we, in we it, haven't. We, we <laughs> haven't, unfortunately. And I think um, it, it's unfortunate that people sort of think about it in that way because yeah. I think that in itself can leave people at risk. I, I guess we wouldn't tend to use sort of phrases like full-blown AIDS anymore. Um, it might be advanced HIV infection or that someone is HIV positive. Um, I suppose is one of the things that have, has, has changed over the years. Um, I, I guess people saying it just belonging to a certain community or a certain part of the community does leave all those at risk because then they think they're not at risk. Um, in the service that we run at the Brunswick Centre, we've got a, a high proportion of um, heterosexual couples uh, and individuals that access the services. We've got uh, children and young people, we've got gay and bisexual men right across the, mm. the demographics really, which really highlights the fact that it is a problem for, for potentially anybody really. What can you say to people who haven't availed themselves of your service, possibly through ignorance rather than downright stubbornness and, and not wanting to admit that they need them? Mm. Well, I guess I would say to anybody if they're worried about HIV or they feel they need an HIV test or they're, they're HIV positive and, and they're kind of scared to come forward for services is, is to is to take the risk with that. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got excellent services locally, not only the Brunswick Centre, but our clinicians locally are excellent. Uh, we work very closely with clinical teams. Um, there's, there's, lots, there's lots of good things in place that can support people to have a really good quality of life. Yeah, and people's anonymity will be respected with Totally, it. totally. We've got policies and procedures, confidentiality. Um, we've been around a long time. We know all the issues. We, we, we deal with those issues on an hour by hour basis and um, everything is kept confidential, totally. Thanks to my guest, John McKenahan from the Brunswick Centre. Remember, if you'd like to contact us about this or any other story, please email or contact us via Facebook or Twitter. I'm Dave Hodgson. See you next week, and I'm looking forward to it already. Bye-bye for now.